What's up everybody? So getting right into it, we're gonna talk about the top three best areas to live in the whole Fort Lauderdale Metro. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. I cover anything and everything related to moving to and living in Fort Lauderdale and the surrounding areas. So make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And if you didn't know, I am a licensed real estate broker in the state of Florida. So just as much as I love making these videos, I'd love even more to help you with your real estate needs. So this number that's popping up, that's how you can get a hold of me. Call, text, email, days, nights, weekends. I'd love to hear from you. So getting right into it, we're gonna talk about the top three best areas to live in the Fort Lauderdale metro area. I know that a lot of you guys that reach out to me, you don't necessarily wanna live in the city of Fort Lauderdale. So we're gonna talk about the top three, and this is not just my opinion, but this is from forums, you guys that reach out to me, and some of my past clients. So with that, getting started, the first city is gonna be Oakland Park. So if you look at Fort Lauderdale on a map, it's kinda got like this weird, I guess you can call it like a U shape almost, and right in the middle, the empty spot, that's where Oakland Park is. So essentially, it does just bleed into Fort Lauderdale. There's really no dividing line. You wouldn't know the difference between driving through either one. But the one thing is, is that since it's about two and a half miles from the beach, you're not really gonna get the super Florida tropical feel there. It's gonna be a little bit more urban, whereas the further to the coast that you get, it gets a little bit more tropical. And in advance, I apologize if you hear noise. I am here at Hugh Birch State Park in Fort Lauderdale and there's boats constantly going by me and I'm airplanes over my head, so I apologize. But yeah, getting back into Oakland Park, I mean, the cool thing about it is they're going through a redevelopment right now just like I mentioned about Pompano Beach. So it's been going on for a little while. Their main focus is the downtown area. They wanna build it up a little bit and you know add some green space and just build some more housing. So we do tend to see some newer construction within the last four or five years that have gone up in Oakland Park, including some currently that's going up, which is gonna be the Oakland Apartments, which is right on the corner of US 1 and Oakland Park Boulevard. And then we also, if you go a little bit further west, there's a community called Oak Tree, which is a brand new community of townhomes and single family homes. And that's by Pulte Homes. So I have been in there. It's pretty nice. Right now it looks kind of empty because they're still building it up. There's not really many trees there. So it kind of looks like a desert a little bit, but when it's finished, I mean, it's gonna have resort style amenities and it's a perfect chance to just own a home a brand new home in the Fort Lauderdale area, starting at about 550,000. That's gonna get you a town home, about 1,800 square feet. And it ranges as high up as just about a million dollars for a 3,000 square foot single family home. So we are starting to see a lot of people flock to the Oakland Park area, just because it's more affordable than Fort Lauderdale. I mean, I had a past client of mine who was set on getting an Airbnb in Fort Lauderdale only, and we wound up going to Oakland Park and we got him a really good deal. It was 400,000, three bed, two bath, fully renovated, completely brand new, everything inside. The same house in Fort Lauderdale would have been probably 600,000 minimum, depending on the location. And not only that, but the appreciation. I mean, we're talking a year and a half, the homes probably appreciated $100,000 to $150,000. Again, that was in our crazy market, so don't expect that kind of appreciation all the time but I like these types of towns that are going through these redevelopments because it's a good chance to get in in the beginning. The values are lower and they're only gonna go up. And Oakland Park is just your typical city outside of Fort Lauderdale. One of my favorite spots though is, is the Funky Buddha Brewery. So if you're from Florida, or maybe you're not, maybe you've heard of Funky Buddha. It's like an IPA style beer. So the brewery is actually located right in Oakland Park. And it's a cool spot to go hang out at, grab a beer. They got some good food too, so it's it gets popular at lunchtime. And so that's one of my favorite spots in Oakland Park. Now, as far as housing goes, you can get a condo in Oakland Park on the low, uh, mid 100,000s, maybe 150,000, 175,000. And single family homes, 
are gonna range from probably the $400,000 range all the way up to about a million and a half, I think is the highest that I've seen, typically right around a million. It is very neighborhood specific, so certain areas like Coral Heights, the homes are gonna be more in that seven, eight, seven, eight hundred thousand dollar range. And then the further west you go, just like anywhere in the Fort Lauderdale area, it gets more affordable. And I did just previously mention that we do have a lot of people flocking to Oakland Park. And a lot of them are coming from one town specifically, which is actually the number two town on the list and that's Wilton Manor. So Wilton Manors is right in the middle, right south of Oakland Park in the, in the U shape, I guess you would call it, in the middle of Fort Lauderdale, and the vibe here is just different. Even though you're two and a half miles from the beach, you, stu you still do get that tropical Florida charming vibe. It's a little less urban, and it's just a very desirable place to live. So West Wilton Manors, which is just west of Andrews, has a different feel than East Wilton Manor. It looks a little bit more like your standard South Florida ranch style homes, very well manicured. And then once you get east of Andrews, that's where you're gonna to start to see a little bit of the charm and different style of housing. That's also where Wilton Drive is. So that's the main strip that runs through Wilton Manors. That's where pretty much everything is. That's where you're gonna have a lot of local spots, local businesses, restaurants, bars, all your nightlife is right there on Wilton Drive. And as far as walkability goes, if you're on that east side of Wilton Manors or the closer to Wilton Drive you are, the walkability is great. The high school's right there, and you're only about 10 minutes from downtown and still only two miles from the beach. And so I did mention that a lot of people who want to be in Wilton Manors or who are living in Wilton Manors are flocking to Oakland Park, and the reason for that is because it's just such a desirable place to live. The home values have just skyrocketed there. Now, if you like good food, uh, which I'm assuming you do, because who doesn't, one of my favorite spots in Wilton Manors is gonna be Wilton Wings, which technically is in Fort Lauderdale. It's right across the border. It's called Wilton Wings, and it's probably the best wings I've had since I've been out here. If you like sweet and spicy, mango habanero, trust me. And then we have the Alchemist. This isn't located on the main strip. This is a little bit further east, but this is a really popular spot for brunch on Sundays. If you do plan on going, plan to park like a mile away and wait an hour to get in there. As far as homes go in Wilton Manors, you can get something starting in probably the two to 300,000 range for a small condo and ranging up to about a million and a half again, maybe two million for a single family home. And a majority of these homes are gonna be in the six, seven, eight, nine hundred thousand dollar range, which I know is pretty broad, but that's where you're gonna find a majority of the, the single family homes. And then anything cheaper than that is pretty much gonna be a condo or a teardown. So getting out of the city, we're gonna head east now. East, I don't know which way I'm pointing. We're gonna head east to Lauderdale by the Sea. So Lauderdale by the Sea, that's a little hidden gem. It's a small beach town just in Northeast Fort Lauderdale. Once you cross the bridge on Commercial, you're right there. And you're not gonna get that urban feel at all. Like I mentioned, very small beach town vibes, very tight knit community. The people there are very protective over that town. And if you actually watch my video I just did on walkability, you could learn a little bit more about it because that's one of the most popular things about it is how walkable it is. I mean, the town can't be more than a couple square miles at most and everything is kind of located right in the center on commercial and A1A in the square, I guess. That's what I call it. I don't, I don't know if that's what it's called, but I call it the square. That's where you're gonna have all your restaurants, shops. You got Sloan's ice cream, which is really good. Vinny's, Taco Craft, Aruba's is on the beach. And then the cool thing about it is it's not really a party town, but people still like to have fun there. And often on the weekends, you know, you'll see you'll see live music being played out in that little square. So a lot of people like to go for dinner or happy hour, and there's live music being played. Now, if you're looking for the party type of vibe, like you would expect in like Miami or just what you think of South Florida in general, this is not the town for you. They people the people still do know how to have fun, but it's more of a chill, relaxed atmosphere. And as far as housing goes, you're gonna find everything. You're gonna find everything from multifamily to townhomes, condos, single families. And the cool thing about condos is the town actually passed a law a couple years ago that condos can't be built any higher than four stories. 
they want to protect that small town beach charm feel, I guess you could say. So it also allows you to keep your view of the ocean. So you're not going to find any high rise condos here. When I tell you this place is a hidden gem, it's a hidden gem. As far as housing goes, again, we're starting in the typical $300,000 range for a very small condo. And it ranges up to about two million. A lot of the single family homes here are gonna be in the seven, eight, nine hundred thousand dollar range and above. The condos are what's gonna be more affordable, but you could still find a million dollar condo in Lauderdale by the sea. Another cool thing that I didn't think about or mention is that they still have coral reef in the ocean that's less than a hundred yards offshore. So if you're into that type of stuff, perfect spot to be. So whether you're more into the suburbs, that urban feel, your little tropical oasis in the middle of the city like Wilton Manors or your small beach town vibes like Lauderdale by the Sea, I hope this video helped you out. If you have any more questions about any of these towns or anything in regards to moving to South Florida, this number that's popping up, feel free to give me a call on it at any time. I'd be happy to talk to you. Thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next one.